Amazon sitting on a Gen Z gold mine that could be worth $46 billion. And it's not movies or prime. Amazon is quietly sitting on a $46 billion product. I like how they say quietly sitting, like as if like we want Twitch to be quietly existing. Every streamer is like, please don't be quiet about us. Bring more users to the site, please. Help us grow. Laura Martin, an analyst from Needham, wrote to investors on Wednesday. It's not Prime Day, it's not the ring, it's 46, no, 46 billion Raider Rich. 46, not 46, do you think this, this site is, if this site was worth 46 million, Amazon would have thrown us in the trash already. It's not even a AWS, it's tremendously profitable cloud computing division. Instead, investors should start paying attention to Amazon's live streaming platform, Twitch, which may be relatively unknown to older generations, but has become a live streaming staple among Gen Z and Gen Alpha. What? Gen Alpha? There's a generation younger than Gen Z already? That's not possible, right? Are those like one-year-olds? Like, well, who is Gen Alpha? Are they watching Twitch? Gen Alpha started in 2010. What? Gen Alpha started in 2010? which means they are 14 years old. That's crazy. That is, that is freaking crazy. Twitch is best known for video game streaming and is the largest streaming platform for video gamers by far. Yet the service has, has expanded far beyond the gaming world. Twitch, Martin noted, allows Amazon to access an advertising market the company wouldn't otherwise have. Nearly two thirds of Twitch users are men and nearly three quarters of them are under 34. For Amazon as a whole, only 45% of its customer base is under 34, and most of them are female. That's really interesting. That's a very interesting dichotomy, actually. I mean, Amazon, like, you know, like Amazon people shopping on Amazon being, you know, mostly women does check out. Yeah, it's pretty much like on the flip side. Really interesting. Yeah, that is a very interesting demo. Endemic advertisers, video games, and accessories that advertise on Twitch also buy ads on Amazon as well, and many of these advertisers would not be clients of Amazon without Twitch. Similarly, brands can buy ads in Twitch to access hard-to-reach young men, most of whom do not watch traditional TV. Interesting. And that's why they've been pushing the ads so much. It's not just men, however. At any given moment, over 2.5 million people are watching someone stream on Twitch. The service boasted 35 million average daily users in 2022, and 1.3 trillion minutes watched on the platform that same year. Those startling numbers don't just come from video games. Martin likens Twitch's market dominance to that of Google's YouTube. YouTube has carved out VOD video on demand space and Twitch has carved out the live streaming space. Twitch has boosted the careers of ultra popular Gen Z comedians, most famously 22 year old Kai Senat. I didn't even know he was 22, oh my gosh. Who has the most followers on the platform at 12 million, gained popularity on Twitch for his 24 hour streams and pranks. Celebrities from Drake to Ice Spice have sat down on Twitch to joke with Senat. Once Drake bet $121,000 on Senat beating rapper 21 Savage in a game of NBA 2K, Senat lost, then broke his streaming setup out of rage. The platform has also become popular among young political commentators such as Hassan Piker, better known as Hassan Abi on Twitch, where he espouses left-wing political takes to his 2.1 million followers. On one pandemic evening in 2020, Piker streamed with rep Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, to play Gen Z favorite among us and nearly broke the platform as 400,000 viewers scrambled to watch. As Ocasio-Cortez played, she also chatted about healthcare policy and bantered with a constant stream of comments from viewers. I think the lack of predictability on a stream is what makes it compelling, Ocasio-Cortez, who still occasionally streams on Twitch, previously told the Washington Post. Being able to be comfortable in the chaos of inviting so many people in the conversation, you need to be okay with that. Those who embrace the mayhem and get popular off it can reap sizable rewards. A data leak from 2021 suggests that the platform's top creators make eight to nine million dollars a year from the platform. Streamers get paid through a subscription model. Can we know this? I'm not gonna like, you know, recite all this, whatever. Some creators rebelled against Twitch last year after it decreased the amount of subscription revenue it allotted to partners. The current split is 50-50, a significant decrease from the original 70-30 split that a lot of creators, I mean, some creators got 70-30. The Partner Plus platform. Since then, Twitch CEO Dan Clancy has been working overtime to restore relations with creators. In January, Clancy announced a new system. Anyone with more than 100 paid subscribers would now receive 60% of the money fans pledge. Twitch has made some good moves to help creators make money, but it's still tough to make a living from streaming alone. Jerome Assetti, a Minecraft Twitch streamer, told Fortune. A lot of us have to rely on ads, product promotions, and other ways to bring in income. 
Asadi has only recently expanded to Twitch from YouTube, where many of his 5.41 million followers know and love him as Jerome ASF. Twitch is about being in the moment and engaging with viewers live. It used to feel more like a small, tight-knit community, but now it's this huge platform with all kinds of content and different ways to engage your fans. Despite its popularity, the platform has struggled with profitability, laying off 35% of its staff in January to help pay the prohibitive costs associated with supporting 1.8 billion hours of live video content monthly. Amazon first acquired Twitch in 2014 for about $970 million, where, when Twitch had a revenue of a, about $72 million. In 2023, the website generated approximately $3 billion in revenue. Holy crap. She upgraded Amazon's price target to 210 from 205 while maintaining a buy rating on the stock. Barnes new price target is based on the upside we calculate from Twitch. Interesting. How if they're not profitable, like how do they have three billion dollars in expenses or more? I mean, it's I guess all in the hours, the, the live stream hours, like streaming all that content. That's crazy. I mean, it's a lot of video though that gets I mean, they had a lot of staff too, right? They've cut their staff, I mean, 35% of their staff, right? I mean, that's, I mean, that's not going to add up to a billion, but it's going to be millions and millions. Um, pretty interesting. I did, I did not know um, that Twitch generated $3 billion in revenue. Um, this article is very interesting. Um, you know, this is coming from someone who, you know, buys and sells and advises on buying and selling stocks right so they're not you know they're kind of like an outsider in a way like they it, they seem to have a solid grasp of twitch it's it's a pretty interesting way of looking at twitch like especially when you're in it as a a twitch viewer or twitch creator you're you're you're, you're in it right and you, like you know, I've I've had people ask me, is Twitch dying? Like, is Twitch a dying platform? And I think it's stabilizing from from the pandemic. Um, is it a dying platform? I don't I don't see it as being dying. It's pretty unique. But and there, I I still feel there's opportunity for Twitch to grow. The technical side of Twitch, I think streamers take for granted. Yeah, I mean, you have to consider that most streamers. First of all, most streamers don't make a living for themselves. And Twitch getting approximately half of what a streamer makes means that Twitch is also not making a living on most streamers. Imagine like streaming on Twitch and and knowing that you're you're just only costing the platform money. Like Twitch even even for people that do bring in money. I saw an article recently. Let me pull it up. This is from two weeks ago. Asmongold claims Twitch is losing money on his second channel and maybe forced to run ads. Asmongold is one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. His main channel has 3.5 million followers and his alt account has 1.8 million and averages, I mean, probably a, a fair amount of, of viewers. Averages uh, 30,000 viewers on his alt account. The Twitch star hasn't even tried to get partner on the account, meaning it doesn't feature any pre-roll ads. That may change soon, however, as Asmongold claims the amount of money is costing the platform may force them to run ads. According to Asmongold, there's a good chance that Twitch will force him to partner the channel. So there is going to be a good chance I might have to partner the channel. The truth is that this channel is very popular. If I look, rank 10 on the entire platform. Fine. That's a lot of money. I would not be surprised if Twitch is spending over a million dollars a month hosting this channel and they're not happy about it. Given the rare circumstances of such a large account not being fully monetized, it's easy to understand why Twitch would want Asmongold to be partnered to run ads. I'm honestly surprised that Twitch has not started running pre-rolls on, on uh, non-monetized streams. And I, this is, I mean, like why I've told creators, small creators, like, Think about being an affiliate because as soon as you become an affiliate, you start getting pre-roll ads and then you have to deal with all the ad situation. But if you don't and you just focus on growth, you know, there's there's an advantage to, to not having a, a monetized account, especially because having a monetized account doesn't mean you're going to make any money. I, I'm actually surprised they haven't put ads on on non monetized channels yet. They probably could without even saying anything, honestly. I mean, once someone found out, there'd be some uproar, but... If people don't want to watch ads, there's no obligation that I have to do it. You just figure out another way to make money. The people who fail are the people who aren't creative. Just be more creative with how you make money. If Twitch owns a large portion of the infrastructure, are the running costs really that high? Um, 
I don't know how exactly that works. So basically what happened was Twitch acquired, I mean, Amazon acquired Twitch. Amazon took Twitch's tech, repurposed it, repackaged it, sells it. People can buy, you know, streaming services basically uh, and technology. That's now an Amazon thing. And Twitch is under Amazon. There are costs to it, but it's cost to Amazon, not to a, to a third party company. So I would imagine that it's reduced, but think about how many people are streaming and not earning subs or running ads or running enough ads. A lot of, I mean, most creators, I would say are probably like unprofitable to Twitch. They own to the edge of their network, but you still have to pay bandwidth to major carriers. So yeah, I mean, a really interesting, really interesting article here. I think it, it, I mean, I'm hoping that this is true, that Twitch is like worth a lot and so valuable. And, you know, we definitely don't want to be on like a sinking ship. It doesn't really feel good to think of Twitch as like, oh, they're not profitable. Like the fact that Dan Clancy outright said that is really fascinating. You know, I, I, I appreciate the transparency. It's also like kind of like, I mean, it's concerning to say, to hear that in the middle of like a uh, mass layoff and the platform is, I mean, if we look at some charts here to see how Twitch is doing, let's see. So this is year by year. Um, you can see clearly where the pand pandemic boom occurred. Um, so, I mean, you can, and you can clearly see like Twitch is in March, 2020. You know, when things started to take off, like I would say like, you know, February, 1.4 million viewers on average on the site. And we're still over two, we're 2.2 million. So at, at peak, it was about three, over 3 million, or just about 3 million at peak. Uh, so it's gone down quite a bit and it, it does continue to decline. So 2.2 was in July, uh, that's where we're at now. So we're June 2.2, that's down from 2.3 over the last two months. Uh, that's down from 2.4 to 2.5 the months prior to that. So we are still seeing um, a sliding downward trend here. 